What about what about parking? I mean, I know you talked about ac vehicle access as far as like live trucks and stuff are concerned, but lowly old me and my Toyota Camry, <laughs> has there been any thought as to maybe doing some sort of like permit process where you have maybe a designated area, you know, the po garage or something like that, where media can have a place where they can park? Because I mean, when you're on deadlines and you know going to and from different places, it's going to take long enough fighting traffic, let alone trying to find some place to park. And we, um, that might be a tall order, but... <laughs> do we get some kind of numbers? I mean, can everybody kind of get for what kind of number? I mean, we're not, not promising anything, but we need a number to work with. And something realistic, too, not like a sheet of everybody that works in your station or whatever. <laughs> you know, like a realistic number. And there may be, a, you know, it may come down to some type of a carpool for the trolley. And, uh, and uh, as far as I know, and she knows it differently, there hasn't there haven't been any changes with any Heartline scheduling yet because we're not we're not and they're a part of, of the planning committee as well. We're just not we don't have all of the specifics on traffic yet to be able to make this. I just know we should buy a bus pass because we can get it at, you know, yeah. on Country Boulevard and that's the only way we're getting in. <laughs> yeah, that whole transportation rollout will come in one big package. I kind of have to say this too, um, in the joint media center or whoever will be designated spokesperson, can we uh, ask for a request for somebody who's bilingual for InfoMAS? See. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's just, because the colonel and I were sidebarring a little bit during the conversation. And I think, you know, between now and June, as Laura and the chief mentioned, we're we'll trying to come out and give some uh, more concrete understanding of where we're going. If, if we come up with a spot that we try and designate as a logistics hub, not an access hub, but a logistics hub, you know, we're going to do our best to provide you some kind of security for that environment because we're telling you to go here. But if you mobilize and you park here and you park there based on just the normal happenings of downtown, you know, we, we're not going to be able to shadow all of that independent work so everybody understands. So, you know, whatever security patrols are out there, are out there and, you know, we'll be there and we'll be, you know, there'll be a high profile and there'll be a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of patrol, a lot of activity. But, you know, if we designate a spot, we're going to do the best we can to provide some you know, control at that spot, but once you frag out and, you know, that, you're kind of on an independent journey now. When you pick that spot, I I'm in-house. I never get to even get outside the building. Can you try and pick it between the convention center and the forum? Because well, these guys got gear that they're going to be huffing. Well, and that leads me to my other, yeah. not a closing point, but one of my other thoughts is that, you know, the one thing that we're planning for a lot, and I hope you are too, is the heat. You know, we're not dealing with 70 degree no humidity. You know, we've studied that scientifically, and we know what we're up against. Um, we hope your staff does too, because we can't, we don't want to contribute to the, you know, the medical services any more than we're trying to anticipate for now. So, you know, we're asking your staff to go through all those things. And it's one thing to cover a story in August that you get to pick your start and stop sign. It's another thing to cover four days in August with the lightning, the rain, you know, the, the humidity, the heat. And the fact that the, the outside dynamics are controlling your energy versus you picking a start time and stop time and going back within 100 feet of your air conditioned vehicle. So, you know, please make sure that you're working that part out. And we don't need to wait till June to discuss that piece because we know it's coming. You brought up weather, and this half the table said hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane season has been amended. <laughs> we'll put Clystrom 9 on like uh, just repeat. <laughs> well, I mean, um, obviously, will there be additional evacuation routes or the same routes that you would normally have for downtown? That will be, of course, administered to all the guests who are coming in town. Well, Where we're going with the needs on that. <laughs> I mean, I know Sarah Pellin's hanging out channel side, but at some point she's going to have to go. <laughs> There's a uh, consequence management subcommittee. Okay. They're very robust. Uh, I mean, you know, as, as the chief mentioned, all of our working relationships have been here because you know, we're an all-hazard community. We've been planning all hazards for you know, over a decade mm -hmm. uh, in a much better way than it had been done prior, uh, sadly, to the 9-11 era. But, mm -hmm. um, 
not only that, we have everybody from FEMA down to the county and city's emergency management process. So there's an overlay to our normal beyond mm -hmm. what we're doing you know, for our community every day. And this is me throwing out an idea, it may not even be logistically feasible to the, the commanders, but um, our last police funeral we brought in, just the biggest flatbed truck I've ever seen, and it's been over 20 feet long. And that was the location that everybody went live from. Is that viewed as a hindrance that you're locked down into a spot like that for the live location on a big uh, flatbed truck, or is that an advantage uh, for your live location? I think it should be an addition to it's my morning option. crew, yeah, yeah five in the morning, four. could go live from there. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, the reality of is that uh, that would be a great asset to have, but you know, <coughs> being in the business, as soon as something happens, <laughs> crews are going to scatter so they can get as close to the, right. you know, whatever is going on, if it happens to fall during one of the shows. So, I mean, I think that's a great idea, and I would think that that's something that most of these organizations would take on. But just understand that they may not just say, I'm going to be tied to this location. And then, um, as far as the number of staffers that, that you guys would want to have down there, would it be a live, a live crew and then a roving crew? Or I think that's when Chief Ben is talking about numbers uh, so that we can try to figure out how many vehicles can we get in and out, <coughs> how many people do we need to shuffle in and out. If you guys can email that directly to me, like what's your wish list and what you would like to have. Um, and then we can figure out ways we're just to keep it logistically <coughs> Excuse me. I think that nails home another point about credentialing people through Tampa PD and not just through RNC is, you know, not everybody's going to remember to email you. I mean, inevitably, there'll be somebody that doesn't realize they're supposed to do that. And if there's a credentialing process, then you have exact numbers to, you know, with which to plan. I, you know, that's like overstepping <laughs> over here, but. I mean, Laura, we can all email you, you know, here's what we believe we're going to be having down there. But I mean, just like, you know, a Tampa Bay Bucks game or whatever, I would, uh, I would think it would probably be easier for planning and you're to say, this is the space that we've got. Each organization's going to get X number of passes or whatever. And then we will work with that on our end. That makes any sense. Well, right, and I just want to make sure that we are limiting you that it's not feasible for you to cover it. If you say, okay, you got one movie, you got one live crew for the morning show, you know. Um, so if I have a, a feeling from what your wish list, I think we can make sure that we're meeting your needs, um, but also restricting it so we're not burdening the area to many vehicles. Um, you know, another um, kind of visionary thought. You know, we're we'll probably learn as we go a little bit through those four days, or four or five days, and I think maybe as you know, we all talk in the planning cycle here is that maybe there's a way that you know, at a right moment for you on day two or day three that if we could do something better collectively for, for your benefit, that we grow in that. And uh, we give you information that you can turn around and use the next day and the next day and the next day. So, you know, trying to, to work with you. Not at all. Well, I would just say to have that secure area, I know all the TV stations will at least want to have that area because, you know, I hear you all going to chase after every protester, but as soon as somebody gets hurt or the equipment's damaged, then the game's going to be over and we'll want a secure area to, to go live on. That's my biggest concern is that we will get caught up in some sort of uh, a dangerous situation if one of my employees gets uh, injured. So to have something secure that we can fall back to at all times is great as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say two things. Um, one is about access, not really the logistics for the vehicles or, or just moving around downtown. Um, you know, I assume certainly some of this is that uh, in non-criminal situations, um, journalists and the public will have the same ability to move around pretty much every time. Um, including parade rides, including the public access area. And I assume that's what the grounds are going to address. Mm -hmm. If they say something different, well, that's okay. Um, but then the second thing that it will be useful to know, I think, in the department ground rules, 
is as um, as things start to happen and journalists follow news to where it's going on, what are going to be your expectations uh, or, or you know, how does your training address those uh, those situations? Safety is going to be the overriding concern for all the officers. And they will be provided training that uh, will include the media training, as Laura said, and understanding that you have access to the covered demonstrations of um, parades or protests or expressions. But again, it's going to be the safety. And that's something that you can't write down concretely in these instances. And so, I appreciate that we don't want anybody to be hurt and hopefully when we say all right this isn't a safe situation you need to, to leave here you know everybody says it's safe up until the point that they get hurt and then turn to the police and say why didn't we prevent this from occurring so safety will be our overarching consideration in uh, access Laura, just to understand in the next couple of weeks, perhaps, you want all of us to email you with well, they're doing the resources that we will have or we expect to have uh, our desires in terms of coverage. And so put that out to you, and then you will sort of respond back to that and when you guys make your rounds. Exactly. If it was just one person appointed from each media outlet that can send that wish list to us of what you guys envision. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be done this week. I mean, if you can say that you get it to us by May, um, and you guys have a couple of weeks, is that realistic for you guys? Laura, would it make more sense for you to send out more like a survey yeah. where you control it and then you ask exactly what you want to know? That way we can make sure you get what you need and some of us kind of guess at sort of what you might want to know about. Um, I, can, I can put together a survey, but I have a feeling that there might be some logistics that I leave out so that you guys would just have to add that in the comment section. Okay, before we go, anybody from uh, Pinellas or St. Pete that wants to, anything that you guys want to bring up? PIOs, any? 275 is back up to I 4 for a vehicle fire. So. I think you're <laughs> <laughs> you No, we're all working right together with you, so we'll be able to convey kind of a, a unified, um, you know, approach to both venues. I have one more question about the compound you're talking about setting up the light trucks and everything and we're talking about that because of the problem of cars and you know one person in a car versus a, a staff of 10 people in a van uh there could be some consideration for a drop-off zone mm -hmm. at that location so we can bring them in with their gear drop them off that vehicle leaves mm -hmm. and and just and that we're parking okay. yeah or those are considerations i mean we're looking at that with our officers and Again, it's our, our uh, if all of our planning goes right, traffic will be the, the main concern of this event. And so the more that we can do to alleviate the number of vehicles, the, the better it is for our traffic planning. So uh, we can look into that too and maybe look for some remote places and then be able to shuttle in and out. I and mean, I'm talking about, you know, we go back to 13, pick up a crew, number of crew, drop them off, go back to the shop and they're ready, oh, okay. You're we in drive the back down, okay. pick them up, drive them back, just maybe shuttling our crews back and forth, but having a drop off. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I read that article uh, about the 300 state buses that were going to be uh, coming in and out and mm -hmm. parking them, and I was thinking that it would be a similar situation for us, that we would have a certain amount of vehicles every day that would be coming in, and mm -hmm. that they would, I'm not asking for the same treatment as delegate buses or whatever those buses are for, but something similar to that where you would see us with a car pass or something mm -hmm. that would allow us to get in and out. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you guys very much. We really appreciate it.